I'm reading an article from Discerning the World. It's called The Gnostic Roots of the Latter Rain Slash Word of Faith Movement. Why Latter Rain, Word of Faith, and Dominion Theology is a Lie. The Latter Rain Movement, as it has come to be called, actually began in 1948 from a Pentecostal Assemblies of God revival and a ministry school in Saskatchewan, Canada. The terms New Order and Latter Rain were coined from this movement. One of the main tenets of this new Latter Rain theology was the belief in the restoration of the ministry of the Apostle and Prophet to the modern day church. From that time on, the idea that God was restoring these offices began to be disseminated first in the mainline Pentecostal churches and then in the evangelical spirit-filled churches as a whole. William Brandom was connected to the revival in that the men who started the revival had been ministered to and spiritually affected by Brandom's ministry. In 1948 to 1950, some took the title of prophet and set out preaching, teaching, and prophesying. In so doing, they spread the seeds of this movement into mainline Pentecostal churches. The following was taken from the website www.discernment.org. It is readily acknowledged by many charismatic leaders that Branham taught heresy, but they still believe he was a true prophet. How can a person teach utter lies and nonsense on one hand, yet hear so clearly and accurately from the Lord on the other? Branham was asked if the Holy Spirit did the supernatural works in his meetings. His response was, no, his angel did these things. He denied the Trinity of God, believed in UFOs, and gave out many predictive prophecies which were proved to be false. He thought he was one of the two witnesses found in the book of the Revelation. At his death, many latter rain ministers prayed for him to be raised from the dead for days. He is still dead. Branham had literally no education at all, not past the 8th grade at most. Might I add here that Todd Bentley, who touched off the Florida outpouring, also known as the Florida Hearing Revival, Healing Revival, holds William Branham in high regard. In fact, Todd Bentley claims that he now has the angel of William Branham. This must be the same angel that Branham claims did all the supernatural works in his meeting. Did you catch that? It's not the Holy Spirit who's responsible. It's an angel. Do not let anyone disqualify you by making you humiliate yourself and worship angels. Such people enter into visions which fill them with foolish pride because of their human way of thinking. They do not hold tightly to Christ, the head. It is from him that all parts of the body are cared for and held together, so it grows in the way God wants it to grow. Colossians 2, 18 through 19 The reason Paul wrote this scripture to the Colossian church was that it was being infiltrated with Gnostic teachings. The Gnostics valued what they experienced and what they learned from angels over Holy Scripture. Is any of this sounding familiar? These Gnostics claimed they believed in Scripture but did not depend on it as their source. Hmm. The following explanation of modern Gnostics comes from angel worship taken from BibleTools.org and sums up Gnosticism beautifully. Modern Gnostics who believe in progressive revelation have also succumbed to the first of Satan's ploys. While God does reveal things to us, the critical point is that what is revealed, if it is truly comes from him, will never contradict what he has already revealed in his word. Counterfeit New World Order and a great deception going on, even on this app. A lot of content creators like Sons of God Ministries and many others are spreading this deception. 
Now to explain this, we have to look at the New Age and the Truth Movement. And the key to understanding this is Gnosticism. Gnosticism rose immediately after the New Testament was written in 2nd century Judea. And it taught the exact opposite of what the Gospels do and the exact opposite of what the Old Testament God is. Gnosticism is essentially the same teachings of the New Age movement and the modern form of mystery schools. New Age is the umbrella term of all the spiritual teachings that teach about ascension and achieving Godhood and worshiping the serpent as the great enlightener of mankind. There's different types of these teachings, but they all come from the same thing. And this is exactly where the New Age movement came from. For example, Freemasonry, Illuminism, Rosicrucianism, Hinduism, Buddhism, witchcraft, and Gnosticism. Gnosticism teaches about reincarnation, ascension, and enlightenment, that our souls have always existed eternally, and we are all part of God, or the universe. And you have to become enlightened by spiritual knowledge, or secret knowledge. And the secret knowledge is that you live in a simulation, a matrix, an illusion, and a fake reality, like the matrix. And you're under the control of evil spiritual beings. Like in the Matrix, our real selves are asleep and we're in a made-up reality created to control us and keep us spiritually disempowered. Just like in the Matrix, Neo learns the truth and gains special powers because he tapped into his godlike powers. And a lot of conspiracy theorists use this Matrix term, just like the awakening. And the satanic twist to all this is that the leader they say has done all this and has enslaved us and according to Gnosticism, is Jehovah, the God of the Bible, the God of the Old Testament. And they don't believe that Jesus is the son of the God of the Old Testament. And the God of the Old Testament is the enslaver of mankind. And that the serpent went into the Garden of Eden to enlighten us and to give us knowledge to wake us up and to show us what Jehovah had hidden from us, this secret knowledge. This teaching is running rampant right now on TikTok, and it is not of Christ, and it is not biblical. This is a counterfeit Christianity, and these truthers will start off showing a lot of truth, even talking about Jesus, and eventually, they have figured all of it out. Don't be deceived. God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23, 19. Progressive Revelation advocates believe that their revelations are more authoritative than the Bible. Rather than complementing and harmonizing with it, making them ripe for satanic influence under the guise of God, revealing something new to them. They may sincerely believe that God speaks to them, yet they simultaneously mistrust what he has already said in inspired scripture. They tend to shy away from Bible study, concluding that they do not need it since God speaks directly to them. If there is anything important, God will let them know. Mm. Now, remember this tactic of sowing seeds that God is untrustworthy and that his word is suspect is not new. In fact, Satan's very first word to Eve were, has God indeed said? The following excerpt was also extracted from the website discernment.org. Paul Kane was part of the healing revival of the mid-1940s when he was 18 years old. During that time, his fellow ministers were William Branham, Jack Coe, T.L. Osborne, and A.A. A. Allen, etc. He saw the excesses of that movement and backed away from it until 1987 when the Kansas City When the Kansas City Fellowship leaders Mike Bickle and Bob Jones felt impressed to serve Paul Kane and his ministry in any way they could, Bob Jones said the Lord named Paul Kane's ministry the Terror of the Lord. Why this name? Paul Kane is reported to be able to reveal people's hidden sins and details of their lives supernaturally. He predicted an earthquake and it happened. Also. People report surges of electrical power that blows out circuits. 
The following was taken from the website deceptioninthechurch.com. Paul Cain cryptically has taught the latter rain teaching of the manifest sons of God. This teaching simply affirms that in the last days a new breed of believers would attain to immortality and conquer the last enemy of death. Latter rain prophets look forward to the appearance of an end time glorification of a remnant church which will become perfected and thus qualify for immortality here upon the earth prior to Christ's return. In fact, they believe prior to the Lord's physical return, Jesus comes again spiritually and invisibly to a corporate body of believers. God's glory re inhabits his temple referring to the end time new breed of believers the prophetic movement teachers identify this great end time company as the man child of revelation 12 which will rule and reign the nations with a rod of iron this indestructible and immortal company becomes impregnated with the presence of the Christ and they will put all things under their feet. These manifested sons of God or man-child company then according to Cain is the really is really the man-child of Revelation 12 which will rule and which will rule the nations with a rod of iron. They will receive divine gifts including the ability to change their physical location to speak in any language and to be able to perform miracles such as divine healing and the raising of the dead according to proponents of this theology we are not to look for jesus to come back physically but rather to come to his body corporately and invisibly through the glorification of these manifest sons of god who will be perfected here on earth This man-child company is also the prophetic fulfillment of the is commonly referred to as Joel's army in Joel 2 and Revelation 9. This army will put all things under its feet as it rides forth as God's agent of judgment to rid the world of evil by overseeing drastic judgment on all who remains in the old generation. Pause. This would be Bible-believing Christians who are not all about the latter reign, Joel's army, New Apostolic Reformation, etc. They are going to bring judgment. Remember when Jesus said that um, you're, you, they will kill you thinking they're doing God a service? That's, that's who this is. Okay. This latter reign, manifest sons of God, man-child company, also goes by other names such as Dominion Theology and Kingdom Now. Latter reign teachings include Progressive Revelation, Revival, Harvest, Joel's Army, Replacement Theology, Postmillennial Eschatology, meaning we're already in the millennium, Signs and Wonders, Territorial Warfare, Ecumenism, Restoration of Apostles and Prophets, Jubilee, Feasts of Tabernacles, the Post-Denominational Church, and Kingdom Now Dominion Theology. Discerning the World Note And the Emergent Church, which is part of the Roman Catholic Ecumenical Evangelization Program. According to Wikipedia, Kingdom Now proponents believe that God lost control over the world to Satan when Adam and Eve sinned. Pause. It's not just Wikipedia. That, that's what they believe. I know. Since then, the theology goes, God has been trying to reestablish control over the world by seeking a special group of believers through these people known as covenant people or overcomers or Joel's army, depending on the source, social institutions including governments and laws discerning the world note seven mountains would be brought under God's authority these covenant people or overcomers are little gods 
God's extension in the world to regain authority from the devil. Pause. Because they don't believe God can do it by himself. He's, he needs us. He needs us. He needs us to uh, give him permission. Because he can't regain his authority from the devil. The church under the leadership of restored apostles and prophets, therefore, must take over the world and put down all opposition. Excuse me. And put down all opposition to it before Christ can return. Anyone who rebels against the church, along with other evildoers, must convert or be punished. This is alarming to me personally because the only one world church mentioned in the Bible is certainly not God's. It's alarming to me too. Now consider the source of the aberrant theology. Branham received his knowledge from angels, not the Holy Spirit, and admitted this. Cain has stated that Branham was the greatest prophet that ever lived in any of my generations or any of the generations of revival I've lived through. Paul Cain's Selections from the Kansas City Prophets I have always found Paul Cain's last name to be particularly intriguing. He called this end-time company that he believes will rule the nations with a rod of iron the man-child company. He believes that Christ will impregnate them and they will put all things under their feet. In scripture, when Eve conceived Cain, she said, I have begotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. These men love double meaning. I believe Paul Cain is taking the man-child of Revelation, who is clearly Jesus Christ, and substituting it for the man-child of Genesis, who is the spirit of Cain. Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. As you will recall, Cain, a farmer, committed the first murder by killing his brother Abel, a shepherd after God rejected Cain's sacrifice, but accepted Abel's. I am left to wonder who this end-time man-child company really is. It most certainly is not God's army. Lucifer, the morning star, is still speaking the same words he spoke to Eve all those centuries ago. Ye shall not surely die, ye shall be like God. There is nothing new under the sun, and Satan never changes his tactics. Isaiah 14, verses 20 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That's the end. This is exactly what this latter reign, New Apostolic Reformation, whatever you want to call it, is doing. It is putting themselves ascending up above God. Putting themselves in the place of Jesus in all these different ways. And it didn't start with Paul Cain. This goes back to all that Alice Bailey stuff. This is the New Age belief. They just put it into the church, changed some terms, threw some Bible verses in there. This is very dangerous and this is one of the, and, and this is the main Trump doctrine that's Trump going prophets. on right now. They have to have one of their guys in the mountain of, of politics so they can take over the world and rule and reign and have authority and do all that, right? It's all connected. Now I'm going to share a clip from one of my older videos that is a really good example of this Manifest Sons of God teaching from Brian Simmons, the author, downloader of the Passion Bible. The kingdom expansion will remove our uh, infatuation with a, a, a make-believe eschatology. I know what Jesus is coming back. When we bring him, we bring him. I know what Jesus is coming back. When 
we bring it? If the second coming, which is not in the Bible. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. It's amazing how many eschatological, dogmag, dogmatic doctrines we built around terms that are not even in the Bible. As they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Rapture, millennium, second coming. Those words are not found in Israel, Revelation said. Judgment is held back. He's not, you say, but what about the, the tsunamis and what about the earth? Those are not judgments, my friend. Those are birth pangs for the kingdom. This is the birth, this is the labor pangs of a creation groaning for you to get unveiled, for you to be the son and daughter of God. Because creation itself is groaning, prevailing, and labor pains until sons are manifest, until the unveiling, apocalypsis is the Greek word, the unveiling of sons and daughters. So kingdom is how much of Jesus is pouring out of your life. If the second coming depended upon you, how close are we? Jesus he Christ came anything. into my room. He breathed on me and he commissioned me. And he spoke to me and said, and I'm commissioning you to translate, to translate the, Bible the Bible into the, into translation, the, project the translation project that I'm giving you to do. And, I and he promised that he would help me. And he promised me he would give me secrets of the Hebrew language. And I felt downloads coming instantly. I received downloads. It was like I got the Hebrew language. And I felt downloads coming instantly. I received downloads. It was like I got a chip put inside of me. I got a connection inside of me to hear him better, to understand the scriptures better, and hopefully to translate. He came into my room. And he blew on me. He promised that he would give me new understanding and new, fresh revelation from his word. And immediately, he gave me a download. Immediately, I began to receive a supernatural download of insight and revelation that has continued to this day. Thou shalt get the Passion Translation. Thou shalt buy it. The sealed book is you. He's the word, the volume of the book, it is written of him. We express the word. We are the word made flesh again. We are the reincarnation of Jesus Christ. The corporate expression. Did you hear that? Gives the welcome. You're so unpredictable, God. And we love that about you. Yes. The wind blows where it wills. Holy Spirit, Ruach Kodesh, Espiritu Santo, Song Yong Nim, come. Fuego de Dios. Fuego. Flame of God. Fuego is fire. Heaven's flame. <laughs> All right. Mas fuego. Mas fuego. Mas fuego. If you're Portuguese, Fogo de Dios! Of the last days! More! More! More, Lord! Put the mark of the Christ on us! Oh, let the mark of the Christ be upon our head and our hands! More. Put the mark of the Christ on us! 
Oh, let the mark of the Christ be upon our head and our hands. Is uh, calling for f in fuego fire to fall on people. Mm -hmm. There's a parallel with Revelation 13. And uh, he is calling on people to receive the mark of the Christ. We'll just say the anointed one here. On their hand or their forehead. Yeah, let me back it up just a little. Listen again. Unveil in us the glory of the last days. More, more. More, Lord. Put the mark of the Christ on us. Oh, let the mark of the Christ be upon our head and our hands. More, more, more. A seal of fire over our heart. More, more. We welcome the seal of God on our forehead. More. Fire. Flame of God. It performs great signs. Even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. Flame of God. Awaken hope. Let hope. Yeah, so fire and a mark on your head and hand. <laughs> this is like dragon practice. Yeah, so, you know, uh, which kind of begs the question, is the real goal of the NAR uh, to uh, prepare the way for the uh, man of lawlessness and deceive these people into uh, taking the mark of the beast? Yeah, I'm just putting it out there as a question because... This is really creepy stuff, and this is the guy who's responsible for bringing the uh, passion translation to the body of Christ. Not only is this guy wackerdoodle, I'm just going to say this is this guy's straight up demonic. Sounds more like he's uh, trying to practice fulfilling Revelation 13 than actually making disciples of Jesus Christ. What do you? There's just one name that can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus.